This podcast is brought to you by MinervaBeauty.com. Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Woke up this way. He's got a lot of cool stuff he's going to show you today. The latest news, industry topics, and business tips. For all hairstylists and salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pixie cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews, let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way, it's gonna be a great day, chop it, clip it, spray it. What's up guys, welcome to the podcast. Um, Today we're gonna do some fun stuff, so thank you guys for tuning in. I'm actually gonna get uh, Instagram going, there's so many, so many things. Uh, So thank you guys for tuning in live, if you're on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, um, we're gonna have a great day. We're going to do uh, some hair. Uh, I want to talk about a couple things first. I want to answer some of your questions as well. We'll do the podcast portion of this show and then we'll do the haircutting portion or taste haircutting. Sometimes it'll be color. Sometimes it'll be whatever. Uh, so let me know what you want to see in an upcoming um, episode of the show. But uh, today we're live. We're going to be cutting hair. You ask questions. We answer them. It's a live class. And then we cut all this stuff up later and share it on all the social media platforms. So um, let's see, who do we got? Uh, I see everybody. Let me know where you're from. Uh, Carly's on her way over here as well. Uh, we're taking care of some salon stuff first, and then we're going to get started. Um, all right. With that being said, today we're going to cut a one length bob. I think that'll be really fun. Uh, that's the goal. If you're listening to this in the audio portion of the show, um, on iTunes or, or anchor later on, um, and you're wondering how to watch the, the haircutting part, uh, all you have to do is go to our YouTube channel and you can watch the entire show, including the haircutting or hair tutorial part of it um, and live class part as well. So, um, cool. Love seeing all of you guys in the morning. Uh, hopefully, you're going to have a great salon day. I want to talk about the first thing I want to bring up is uh, talking about brands. Um, we've gotten into this before. Um, but brands basically, uh, I, I read an article about partnering with influencers and I want to talk about like influencers and how that stuff works. Cause a lot of you guys out there, um, don't realize it, but you're kind of what brands are looking for, um, in this industry. So I want to share this article. Let me pull it up here. Um, the article was in business insider. Uh, and it was why brands are turning away from big Instagram influencers to work with people who have smaller followings instead. And I actually talked about this in my class in San Jose um, last weekend. And I think people are, a lot of stylists don't realize that even though they don't have a huge following, they're actually really valuable to brands. And one person mentioned in my class that they, uh, you know, they don't look at, you know, getting sponsored or whatever it is, uh, through brands, um, as just money. They also look at it as they get free product. And I, um, I wanted to talk about that part of it because a lot of brands, it's very simple to get free product if you're going to promote it on your channel. Um, but what I want people to realize is that they bring a lot more value to the table than just, um, using somebody's product and talking about it. Uh, so no matter how big your following is, and honestly, in the way that this article kind of article went, it talks about the fact that if you, a lot of people with big followings have done certain things to get that following. So, and they haven't done it over a a long period of time. Some people get it, the big following quick. And what happens is the engagement because you've gotten the wrong audience. So what I, with somebody that has a smaller audience or a smaller group of people that are following them on social media, usually um, the return on that person's engagement is bigger. So I want you guys to think about that. Think about um, how you're growing. So, and we've talked about this before from a local standpoint or a getting famous on the internet standpoint. Um, They're two different things, but a lot of people get famous on the internet and they're not actually building a community. So there's a difference between having followers and having a community. 
Uh, what we're trying to do here at Free Salon Education is have a community. We can talk to each other. We go on live every day now. Um, you know, building that conversation that's back and forth. Um, a lot of people go on the internet and they just post uh, to post to their followers, right? Um, but what happens when you're just focused on getting followers and not building a community is that there's no value in that. It's just a big number, right? So a lot of these bigger brands or even media companies, what they did was when the internet first started, they started buying followers and they started really trying to figure out how they could get as mi that number as big as possible. And then brands were like, well, now I've got, you know, this person's got 500,000 followers, so they must have a big voice. But if that voice is going to people that aren't either real or they're not even part of your community, they don't like the same things as you, then there's no value in it. So you got to think about those things. So um, what's up, Carly? Carly's here. Um, so, and Carly, just to fill you in on what's happening, let me see if I have your camera here. There she is. Uh, to fill you in what's happening, I'm talking about, um, there's an article that I read that uh, brands are looking at smaller influencers now instead of big ones. Like, so people that have a lot of followers, the brands are, are trying to go with people that have fewer followers because it's a more genuine thing, yeah. right? So, um, so th that's really where I, I wanted, to, wanted to take this because I want hairdressers to understand that you don't have to, it's, it's more important with who is uh, part of your community than it is the amount of people that are there, right? So being able to engage. So when you think about what you're posting, that's what I want to get into is anytime I'm posting something, I'm trying to direct it towards my community, which would be hairdressers, right? Um, if we post something in the salon, we're trying to direct it towards who would be our customers. Um, so that's, can you talk in your mic? Hello. Okay, it's working. Cool. <laughs> um, so th those are the things that I, I really want people to uh, to make sure that they're focused on when you create something to put out there for people. The way that you're going to build a community is putting it out there um, for that other person to either start a conversation with them, to get their feedback, to bring them some sort of uh, you know value through like style tips or different things that bring engagement with the person on the other end. It's yeah. kind of like if you, you've had a conversation with a person before that mm -hmm. really all they're talking about is themselves yeah. the whole time, right? Yeah. So when you think about that's kind of like social media, but in real life. So like if you're posting something on social media and all you want to do is just talk about yourself mm -hmm. or what you're doing great or whatever it is, then you're not actually having that. And that's not an engaging conversation. Oh, yeah. So then that person leaves that conversation and they're like, I don't really want to talk to that person again, right? So that's where people need to think about social media in that form is you need to put out things that just benefit the other person, not things that benefit yourself. Absolutely. And then you'll see yourself not, not necessarily growing fast, but building relationships and a community. Same thing with being behind the chair in the salon. Even if you don't want to be in social media world, um, when you're behind the chair... If you're a hairdresser that um, isn't listening to the customer, doing only the things that you want to do, like all these things are happening, you're not building a relationship with your customer. Yeah. So then in turn, you lose the customer, mm -hmm. right? So think about those things. Um, I want to see your guys' questions up here in the chat so we can uh, go through some answering. And da 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 Somebody say, can I do more blow dries? Yes. <laughs> Actually, today we're going to blow dry. Uh, I was thinking about doing a dry cut into, um, or a blow dry into a dry cut to show you guys that, but I remembered that this mannequin is the blonde mannequins from Pivot Point, and sometimes they're tangly. <laughs> Let's say most of the time. So, um, all right. Let's see if we got any other questions. So, I will be doing a blow dry today for sure. Um... Let's see. Do you know um, the Game of Thrones thing where they're saying that uh, Daenerys's um, ultimate fate may have already been revealed by her hair? Do you know what that is? No. Is it the way the braids are like? I have no idea. I don't know. I want everyone's <laughs> thoughts on this. I'm going to pull it up. <laughs> um, could her hair be full of secrets? Mm. Um, doo -doo -doo. I will say that like she hasn't changed her hair 
in a, like a while. It's been the same. Oh, I think what happened was she posted something on Instagram. Oh. And that told it. Not something that not was like in the show. Actual. That yeah. would make more sense to me. <laughs> the naturally brunette actress wrote, I done did it. Mother of Dragons. Um, let's see. I don't see anything like... They always title news <laughs> articles. <laughs> <laughs> that are going to be like they this gotcha. big thing. <laughs> All focus here is on the color change, but we didn't pay much attention uh, to the length of her hair other than it being a really chic pixie cut. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you guys know anything about it, I'd love to know. <laughs> I, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I just saw the article and I was like, eh, maybe we should know this. <laughs> um. All right. Let's see. And then there was another article, and this is something that's happening in the salon a lot. Uh, which is people growing out people growing out their gray hair. Mm. So this person says that um, this was in the Huff, uh, Huffington Post. I've decided to let my gray hair grow out at 32. So I I want to know like are your customers um, doing this? Is this something that's becoming more common? Because I think we shot ourselves in the foot a little bit with balayage. Well, <laughs> and then we ripped our foot off with uh, ombre, right? <laughs> and then now. Is is gray hair becoming cool and sporadic yeah. gray hair? I actually don't. I don't get the issue with some grays. Right. Like I know people in my life, like when they have a gray hair, they're like freaking out about it. Yes. I'm so <laughs> far okay. Like I do have gray <laughs> here, um, but like people really freak out about it. But now, is it becoming more acceptable? Are your clients doing it? I do know of. Uh, I can name like three of my clients now that have gone gray, mm-hmm. short and gray. Yeah. Um, but they're older than 32 right. and that's where I'm a little like, I'm a little confused. This picture, it's, I would say 50% gray maybe. Um, you know, it looks fine, right? I mean, it looks good, but it's definitely like, it's gray yeah. and it would be easily covered with a demi color. You I've, know? So. I've heard like people who have a lot, like m- majority of their hair that is gray go like just saying, okay, like. I'm just going to accept it and go gray. But I have never heard of like somebody that yeah. young and like not a ton of gray hair letting it go. Right. I feel like most people say, oh, well, when I get to this point, that's when I'll let it. Yeah, let it go. that. Yeah. And this picture, she's definitely like 50%. Yeah. So I would say that would be easily uh, able to be covered up. Mm-hmm. So like, but yeah, if it was 95% gray, it might be kind of cool to yeah. to rock that. But it seems like people are making that choice. So, uh, let's see. I got messages here. Yes, I think because of all the gray hair color trends. That's what Amanda says. Mm. I agree. Uh, blending gray has been a trend in my 40s to 60s. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Gray is in. Lauren. Is Lauren a hairdresser? She seems very excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh I market okay. Mandy's saying I market body waves to my silver foxes. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Okay. Silver foxes, I like it. And maybe maybe that's like where everything's like maybe it's shifting now and yeah. we're going back to like perm like now <laughs> body wave. Cause like that the haircut that we did yesterday mm-hmm. on um on the internet on this show. Uh, it was a curly haircut, and Danielle did the perm on that. Mm-hmm. And even Christina came in. She's like, "This is really nice. Yeah. Like, it's a nice wave." She's like, "You should do a class on this." And uh, so we'll definitely be doing that. But I think, um, you know, maybe that is where it's going. Maybe the body wave will kind of creep back in, yeah. and gray hair will creep. Uh, you oh know, boy. it's it is creeping <laughs> in. So now we're gonna have gray body waves <laughs> everywhere. Um, uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Cynthia says mine's 50 50 and I still cover it makes me look older. I, and that's the thing. Like, I don't know if it really makes people, I mean, I guess it could age people. I think that's more of a style thing. Yeah. Like, I guess, does gray hair make you look older? I don't know. I, I don't, I wouldn't I don't think so. Cause I mean, I've, you know, I think s- it makes people feel older because yeah. we're told that gray yeah. is like an old person thing. Mm-hmm. But, um, the fact is, like, a lot of us at 25 start getting 
you know, yeah. gray hairs I randomly. I my first one like a few months ago. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Freaked out. <laughs> uh, and then Miranda saying, I think, I think it can depend on where you go gray. I yeah. agree. All right, cool. All right, so I think that's good. That's a good podcast segment. Um, hope you guys took a lot from the uh, social media aspect of it. Uh, understand that you guys are valuable. You're more valuable than free products, I believe. And um, and what you need to do is just kind of, a lot of you guys are probably thinking, well, what do I do with brands? First, you got to build the community. And whether that community is 100 people or 1,000 people or 50,000 people, it doesn't matter. And brands shouldn't be looking at it like that either. I think that's where I get my frustration because I think they're generalizing people that have a big following. And obviously, because we have a big following, I look at this article and I'm like, don't tell people the wrong things right. because when you have a very specific audience, it's very valuable. But also at the same time, when you have a very a small audience, but very specific, um, you can influence. And brands now, it's more valuable to a brand for you to share their stuff on social media than it is for you to sell their product one by one in the salon. That's 100%. Like they, uh, I think they, they need to understand that and they need to bring the value to that. Like I think that um, brands are shifting. They're going to start selling more Amazon. They're going to start selling uh, more online on their own websites and shipping out. If they're going to be doing that, then us, the spokesperson for brands, are going to be posting it out to our customers, fellow hairdressers, all that stuff. I think that there should be, um, there is a lot of value in that. So people need to understand that free product is great and it seems like a good thing, but at the same time, there should be something else involved because no matter what, you're putting it out there. It used to be where you would influence one person at a time, your customer, with a product, right? And that's how brands worked it. And you would sell that product for the brand you make your money off of it, whatever. Now, you post something on social media, it's going out to a lot of people, um, whether it's 50 or whatever, 50 people instead of one. So there's so much more value in that um, and you talking about it. But you got to get good at talking about it and you got to get good at building a community so that you have that engagement. So make sure you're doing all of it. All right. Again, thank you for listening to the podcast. MinervaBeauty.com, if you're looking for salon furniture, they're our good friends. They have great prices, uh, so check them out. I'm going to start cutting hair. Again, if you're listening to this uh, in the audio edition, then we're going to end that here. But if you are watching this live and or you're on YouTube, you're going to be able to see the haircut. You guys on Instagram, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to go cut hair. If you want to watch this live haircut, which I recommend you doing, um, go to our YouTube channel, Free Salon Education, and you can watch and tune in live and chat and all of that. So um, we're going to get started with that and get everything set up, and then we'll start cutting some hair. So thank you guys for listening to the podcast, and on to the next. Let's see. All right, guys. So, let me see here. Okay, 
So welcome to today's class. Today, what we're going to focus on, and I wonder if they can hear me. Can you hear me? Let's do a little test. How's the sound? Let's do our rating system. From a one, from a one to 10, 10 being awesome sound, one being terrible, where are we at? Let me see that first. Hello from North Africa. Thank you. I like the process of going from brunette to blonde. Oh, there we go. Wow. The nine, I love it. 9.324279. That's good. Yesterday we had a, an 11.3. Um, so that was good. But I'll take 10s. 10s are good. All right. So today we're going to cut one length, Bob. Really excited to share with you guys this technique. A lot of you guys were asking for it uh, yesterday on the previous video. So uh, today that's what we're going to do. I want to uh, just show you guys really mostly body position today and also um, body position, elevate, like obviously we're not going to elevate because we're cutting one length, but we're going to go through all the different technical things that create a really nice one length Bob. It's also going to be uh, more of a, a, a balanced shape. So it's going to be straight across. We're going to go straight across on the sides and just cut a really nice even line following the head shape around. Um, hello to everyone that's tuning in. Jenna, we'll see you in a little bit. She's coming in to get her hair cut. Um, all right, cool. So I can see your questions. So if you just ask them, um, they'll pop up on the screen. Uh, if I don't see your question or I don't seem to answer your question, just ask it again because sometimes the the uh, the chat goes really fast. So I want to make sure that um, I don't miss something. And uh, Taylor finally made a live. Awesome. Welcome, Taylor. All right, cool. So choice of tools today. I'll actually turn this focus thing off. There we go. Okay, choice of tools today. What we're going to be using is a YS Park. Here we go. This is the YS Park 339 comb. I really like this one for precision cutting. Um, and then I'm using the same scissor as yesterday. This is the scissor that Mizutani made for me. There's a few left on freesaloneducation.com if you want one. Don't know if it'll ever be there again. Let me see. So, and I'll get zoomed in so you guys can see it as well. But what I really want to focus on first is this, the sectioning. Sectioning is very simple. I started off uh, right where the parting is on the left-hand side. This had a previous haircut. So there is a little bit of layering around the face frame, not much layering in the back. So back. So obviously when you're working with a client in the salon, these are things that you're going to be working on. Uh, or issues that you're going to have throughout the haircut. She's got a medium density of hair. We took that section all the way down. And then once I got to the crown area, that's where I shift this line to a slight diagonal and then go right down the center back. And then after I create that line in the center back, I go from the occipital bone across to just behind, a, a little bit below the ear, and a slight diagonal forward line. Um, that diagonal forward line, I'm kind of going to... Um, follow that line as I go across um, to keep this because when you look at obviously the mannequin doesn't have a, a strong hairline but you want to look at your guest's hairline assess that especially with the one length you want to make sure that you're not uh, pulling too much tension stretching things where they don't want to go and um, and things like that so all right so we're going to get started Kay's saying, where do you get your combs? We actually, we sell these combs on freesaloneducation.com. So if you guys are looking for any combs, go ahead and go there. And this hair collar that's on the mannequin, it's pretty cool. Uh, green tone with some grays. We use Joyco hair color. Uh, it's Joyco Intensity uh, with also some of the SB series from uh, their Demi line, uh, LumaShine. So um, you'll see that. That was at the base, and then we did the color, the intensity through the ends. All right, so again, 
Uh, you want to make sure you have even saturation uh, when you're doing this cut. You don't want some of the cut to be, when you're trying to create a precise line, you don't want some of the hair to, to be dry, some of it to be wet. Dry hair shrinks a little bit. So make sure that when you're doing the part that you want to be precise, that you have even uh, saturation throughout. So now, a couple key things to focus on when you're cutting a one length haircut or really any precise haircut is your body positioning. Back out a little bit. So with body positioning, the first thing is I want to have the head um, nice and high on uh, almost like chest level with me. Um, the way that I do this in the salon is a lot of times the chair doesn't quite go this high. I'll sit. Um, I'll sit on a stool so I can get my eyes kind of level with the haircut. The biggest mistake that we make as hair cutters is a lot of times we'll kind of tilt ourselves to cut a line to get our head kind of down. And when you do that, you tilt your eyes. And when you tilt your eyes, it's hard to cut a straight line. So anytime you're cutting, your feet should be pretty much square with your shoulders. Um, bend your legs into it. Keep your back straight so you're not hunched over like this cutting. And then once you're into it, then you keep your eyes flat, your eyes parallel with your scissor, and then you cut your line. That's going to give you a straighter line across. So that's going to be our body position for the back. Her blonde hair is thirsty. I'm going to use the wide teeth of the comb, and honestly, I'm going to use as little tension as possible. Um, it, if I can use no tension, it's even better, but I comb everything nice and even down, and then I hold the comb in the hair just like this. You can't see that. Let's do it like this. That's better. So... Hold the comb or hold the hair in the hold the comb or hold the hair in the comb just like this. I'm gonna go about a half an inch from the hairline. For me, the longer you go, the harder it is that you're gonna get that stack or that kind of it's gonna get too bulky. You could cut a one length as long as you wanted, but for me, like when you're in the grocery store and you see that person that has that really blunt haircut and it just looks weirdly stacked in the back and really thick. A lot of that comes from length choice and uh, density. So for me, I want to go in here, take it about an inch or half an inch from the hairline, come in here with my eyes. That's good. You can see. And I'm going to come through here, everything parallel, and start my line. Now, I'm not going to go too extreme uh, with the first bit of the cut. I just want to start to get my guide in there. Then I'm going to come through. My eyes are level. I'm not even combing at this point, and I'm going to continue that line across. Just using the tip of the scissor to cut through. Now, I don't want to, like, the reason I use the tip of the scissor and not all of the scissor is because once the hair ends up in this area of the blade, it starts to push the weight. So if I came in here and I just kind of started hacking at the hair, it would push that, and then I would get a weird line. So I go in just with the tip and work my way across. The sound is late. Is everybody else experiencing the delay? Yeah, two people, I see it. That's weird. Is it still delayed? Let's see. I just want to make sure because I don't want to keep going if it's all weird. No delay. Okay. I'm not. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Sue. Okay. All right. So now as I work over to the other side, and really I'm just, I'm shifting my body Thanks, Carly. I'm shifting my body because of the fact that I'm trying to show you guys. In the salon, I would not be walking around like this. Um, so I comb the hair down. I keep my eyes square. And I go through and I cut and continue that line. Now, 
if I wanted to follow the head shape around, then I would just continue this line through. I want to bring this hair back just a slight bit, a little bit of over direction. So what I'll do is I'll slide my scissor up under and my comb and I'll pull it back towards me and then follow through with my cutting that way. What that'll do is just push a little bit of weight into this corner area. Um, that's just preserving some of that length and balancing off this line as, as opposed to taking off that corner. So I'll do the same thing on the opposite side. I've got this little bit left here. So I'll pick it up, slide my comb up underneath, tap it down into the comb, and then I'm going to go backhand across just like that. And that preserves that length there. So now I want to look at my line. And I want to make sure that this line balances up fine tune it a little bit because if this line doesn't balance, if this line doesn't work, then you don't want to move forward because the whole entire haircut will be off at that point. So you can step back, take a look at it, make sure that those lengths are good. And what I'm doing there when I just kind of hit the corners, anytime I lift this and pull it back, that over direction gives a little bit of elevation. So then when you drop it down, you'll see some of those little hairs that kind of stick out. I just take a slight bit of that off, not a lot of it. And I want to keep that line. I want to keep that length, but I just clean it up a little bit. All right. So now we're going to continue through the side here. And I'm going to work at about a half inch at a time straight across on the head. So nice clean parting, comb it down, get this hair over, and then I slide my clip up underneath the hair just like that, and that helps hold it up and tight out of the way. The other thing I'm not doing is I'm not tilting the head too much forward. It's just a slight tilt forward. Um, really, I'm, that's just because we're working on a one length, so I want to make sure that I'm constantly, I want to make sure that I'm constantly looking at it from the way that she's going to be wearing it. Um, twist this a little bit. So this is her head straight. So I just put it just a tiny bit uh, forward. We're going to go a tiny bit more. Really what I'm looking for is I want this hair to rest up against the other hair. Um, I don't need it pushing too hard, but I don't want it too far away either if her head's too far back. So we'll comb this section down. You can't see again. It's like my first time. Thanks, Carly. I comb this down just like that. And then I go through and cut the first bit. And then the, on the edge in the corner, I slide my comb up underneath and I cut across just like that. There's your line. Now, I like to go both sides and work through. Um, it's just a personal preference. You could just continue to do that whole side. But because I'm cutting this all square in the back, I don't mind kind of working my way back and forth, making sure that it looks nice and balanced the whole way through. So I comb that over, slide my clip up underneath. So this is a pivot point tripod. Who asked that question? What do we got? Erica. So Erica, this is a pivot point tripod. It's not cheap, um, but for me, I like it the most because it has so many different functions, like being able to pull this little lever down here and move and rotate the head. No other tripod that I've ever seen has that, and it might even be their technology. Um, it's really sturdy. It's a little heavy, but I like the weight of it because I don't travel with a tripod that often. And um, when I'm working here or whatever, when I'm blow drying, it's not going all over the place. So uh, definitely my choice of a tripod. All right, last bit, slide that comb underneath. Just 
And again, just using that tip of the scissor. Now, if I was going to create a graduated bob, I would do pretty much exactly what I just did. Um, and then at this point, when I get over the occipital bone, I would start to slightly elevate the hair, bringing it up to this part. So then I would start that weight build. A lot of people start their graduation right away, which is fine. But for me, I like to have a little bit of that extra density down at the bottom because the head shape curves in um, and kind of you utilize that. And then as the head shape starts to curve away, that's when I start to elevate it. Because right now you can see I, I really have a nice light kind of shape to it already uh, with no elevation because of the head shape. So you got to take into consideration what the head shape is doing and how that affects your haircut. There we go. Okay, so Cynthia is asking if you have somebody with a very low hairline and the cape gets in the way, gets in the way, what do you do? So for me, let me just turn this here. If they have a really low hairline and the cape's in the way of that, what I would do is I would tuck a towel in their shirt and I would undo the cape during that part of the haircut. That's if I wanted to cut it up against the neck. Um, that to me works the best. Uh, I think that's a simple answer, but it's I, but it works for me. So hopefully that'll help you. Um, I don't think there's anything else you could really do about it. And it's that's a pretty rare thing. I don't know if I've more than like maybe once. And I don't even know if I would do this haircut if they had that low of a hairline. Um, depending, so. I can't give you a definite on that because I don't know. I'm not looking at it, but. All right, so comb tension coming through, cutting, and then underneath, lift. And this will be a little repetitive as I work through it, but then we're going to blow it dry, and I'll do some dry cutting detail work so you guys can see that as well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to salon reality this, and we'll rapid fire some questions while I'm doing it. I like to keep the hair out of their face as well, but this much, well, maybe those bangs I would clip out of the way, but for the most part, like I just clip it forward. Um, you could take it up, but here's the thing with the way that I'm sectioning and combing everything. All of my sections are just like this, so I keep all of the hair flowing that way because then when I take the clip out, my hair's already ready to go in that direction. So I take a clean section and then I clip the rest up away. It keeps that consistency and the speed throughout it. Um, because hair, you know, hairdressing and being a successful hairdresser really has a lot to do with timing as well. So you want to make sure that you're going through and not spending extra time twisting and putting things away. But you also have to give your guests a good experience. So... I'm with you. I don't don't put it too much in their face, but also don't limit yourself. So now we're coming around to where it's going to tie into the temple area. So I take another parting and this one comes all the way around the head. Just like that. I'll comb the hair down. This, and I'll show you guys how I cut the side in one sec. So what I'm going to do, so combing it back towards me, come through and cut. I'm not pushing the hair into the head. A lot of people will do this, and you can see when you do that how it kind of scoops and kicks that line out. That gives you a really chunky hairline. You want everything naturally falling nice. Um, 
Then I'm going to figure out where the kind of the corner is in the head shape. And that's what I'm going to over direct back to me a slight bit. So I look at where that corner is. I bring that back to me just a little bit there. Cut my line. I let that fall. That kind of preserves that corner. So you'll see it fall just a little. So you'll see it fall just a little bit. And then when I comb the rest down, now I'm going to follow through with my line. And this is where you want the head to be definitely uh, nice and straight, no bend to it whatsoever. Let's go this way. So I comb this down, and now I'm going to take my line just like this around to the front. Again, just using the tip of the scissor. And we're going to create a flat line today, but you could angle this line if you wanted to. It just depends on what you're looking for. I'm also going to continue on this entire side. Um, and then I'll move to the other side. Is the head tilted an issue at this point of the cut? I think they probably asked that before because it was tilted. Now we're not tilting the head. I'm coming straight across, and I'm just following this guideline now. So straight across there, and then cutting a nice blunt line. I would normally be in front of this, but... Um, just less tension. So if their ears stick out a lot... Um, it would start to kind of push this hair up a little bit. So what I would do is just lightly kind of lift the hair out and comb it down. And I would not push the hair to the head whatsoever. That's like the, the key thing with a one length haircut to really make sure that you don't have any weird lines. Like right now there is no tension barely at all in this haircut. I'm just lightly combing it down, looking at where my guide is and going through and cutting. When I blow it dry, after, that's when I'm going to, you know, do a little bit more detail work, all of that. But you can see how nice and blunt that line is. Um, and really, that's because there was no tension. If I had a ton of tension on this, if you look at it, if I pull this down and you see with tension, see how kind of jagged that line is? That's where if I would have cut it, it would have popped up and then the line would have been jagged how she wears it and how it wants to fall naturally. So don't you don't want to use too much tension, especially when you're cutting a uh, one length haircut. All right, now we're going to move to this side. Take the clip out. Now here's what's going on in the back. I'm now working on the heavy side of the haircut. This is where all of the density is. It's the side... Uh, opposite of her part. So I also want to take that into consideration. So I'll show you guys a couple things as we go through there. Okay. So when do I, what reference point do you determine when to straighten the head? Is it when the section you're working on is at the top of the occipital bone? So to turn the head, oh, to straighten the head. Okay, so any, so when I go to straighten the head, um, it, it has a lot to do with, yes, the occipital bone. Because if I tilt it like this, the occipital bone is like, is laying flat. So as I'm tilting the head, this is pretty much I'm tilting the head. This is pretty much straight up and down, right? But then as I get into this top part, that's a little too much tilt to it. Um, so I, I wouldn't want to go through and cut it that way. So as I'm here, now you can see where the comb's at. I straighten the head up a little bit, and that gets me more on the angle that I want to work with. So I'm constantly kind of just trying to keep whatever section I'm working on flat in front of me. Um, as I work through it. All right. 
but you definitely want to make sure that the head is straight um, as you're moving it around. Make sure your guest doesn't turn her head. I get that line. So now once I get the cut there, I cut straight across, and now I'm going to cut in, keeping a little bit of that corner. Not a lot, but a little bit. Following that guide. And now here's the other thing. Now that I've cut this, this side, and I also have my reference on the other side, now I'm going to look at it and make sure that they're balanced. Just pray to the gods. All right, we're good. So now I'll continue through, comb the hair in the direction I want to part it, and work my way around the head. This blonde hair is showing its true colors now. All right, so again, tilt it just slightly, keeping what I'm working on flat in front of me. My eyes level, little tension, and working through. Oh, geez. Don't tell anybody. All right, now I'm going to comb all the hair into its natural fall. Some of this, it might be a little too much still. No, I think we're good. So I comb it into its natural fall. I want to make sure I can see my guide through. And it's really important within the crown area to make sure that all that hair is falling naturally how it wants to fall, right? So not forcing it over to the side, making sure that you work that cowlick and wherever the hair is going to fall on its own is where you comb it down to. And then I go through here and I work my line across. Nice. Comb the hair down. And then right over to the side. All right, so now we've got our blunt line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a flat wrap, uh, blow dry on her, and then we're gonna detail that line around so it looks really nice. So a couple products I'm gonna use. Let's see here. I'm going to, this is actually a new product from Joyco. Uh, I don't know how new it is, but they sent it to me not that long ago. What do we got? Blonde Life even though this isn't super blonde, but Brilliant Tone Violet Smoothing Foam. So the cool thing about this, you give it to your blondes, and it's a purple foam to tone their hair while they uh, blow it dry. So I'm going to put that through the hair. Nice, soft. Oh, totally going to make a mess here. Yes, I just focused the camera with foam in my hand. <laughs> So I'm going to put that through the hair, lower this a little bit. And just like we talked about uh, yesterday, if you guys tuned into the show, um, 
I could put it through the hair with my hands, but then the last little bit that I'm gonna do is brush it through so we get the product on everything fully saturated. All right, so now we're gonna work this blow dry. Actually, I forgot to grab the nozzle on this guy, so I'll just. Old trusty Dyson, we're gonna get 100 questions about this, this guy. All right, so now we're gonna start blow drying with a flat wrap. So you can see see where the parting is here. Um, that's I don't wanna work this parting in. Anytime I'm trying to work something into its natural fall, what I do is I wrap it around the head and I work that part back and forth. I don't want a part in there because I want to create even volume throughout the entire top of the head so I can push the hair wherever I want it to go at the end. So I'm gonna start my flat wrap around, working it up and over. For the person that doesn't want the hair in the face, this is a good, just kind of up and over just like this. And then you can work it back around the other way. And then back around the opposite. Carly, can you put make that iron? Oh, it's over there, that flat iron on the table. Thank you. The brush that I'm using, uh, Taylor, is the Paul Mitchell 413. Um, I like this brush. It's got it. The Denman is, is nice. Um, and a lot of people use it, but sometimes I don't want that much tension and this has a really light tension to it. So it allows, uh, there still to be a good amount of volume in the hair, um, at the root. Um, and it detangles really nice as well. So I don't actually use the Denman. I use an Ergo diamond head brush. Um, if I wanted more tension into it. But for this particular haircut, I don't want to smooth it too flat to the head. So that's kind of why I'm leafing through it like this as well. Sorry, camera went out. There we go. So I'll leaf through it so I kind of blow dry it over and then I grab a little section of the hair and lift it and blow dry through. Comb over, lift it, blow dry through. Notice the airflow is going over top of the hair cuticle. That's gonna lay it down, make it nice and shiny, keep away the frizz. If you're constantly working up the hair, it's just gonna open up that cuticle and make the hair frizzy. So it's key to make sure that you're just constantly wrapping it, airflow going down. Notice my blow dryer doesn't even move barely. Um, my brush does all of the work. All right, now we're gonna work into the back. Same thing, flat wrap up and over. And what you're doing is you're initially, you're taking the hair giving it a little bit of volume, but using the head as a roller and giving it a little slight bend. So watch, watch how, as I blow dry this over and it starts to dry. And when I comb it down, it lays a nice little bend and nice and soft through it. So you're using that head shape to kind of create the curve that you want.
The foam didn't tone. So Miranda has a couple questions. The foam didn't tone this. This is green hair. The foam is for toning blonde hair. I just figured I would showcase it to you guys because they sent it to me, and I'm not doing blonde hair right now. But it's I'm using it for the hold. Um, you also saw the long pieces on the side. That's because this haircut is cut to have a side parting. So there's a longer bits that go over to this side. But when you pull them over to this side, they're longer. So um, this is what she's seeing. And this is where a lot of people make big mistakes because when they bring the hair over here and they see this long piece that actually lives on this side, they take it and they cut it, which is not right, not good. So there's always a purpose for hair. You never want to go through, you never want to go through and uh, just chop things that you see because they, they usually have a purpose. Do you like the Dyson over other hair dryers? It doesn't sound like it's all that loud. Here's what I'm gonna tell you guys. This microphone is actually, um, it's, it's good and it, it's meant to cut out background sound. So you guys don't hear the, the blow dryer. Dyson's not super loud, but it is, it kinda has like a dentist drill sound to it a little bit. Yeah, and it's at the initial start of it, and then it's a pretty loud dryer. Like, I kind of feel like I'm yelling. Um, so I wouldn't say it's super quiet. It is uh, nice and light, um, compact. I like uh, being able to just hold the nozzle of it. Um, but for the price of a Dyson blow dryer, um, I, I don't know. If you wanted something cool to sit on your counter, you like the look of it, then go for it, spend the money. Um, but from a technology standpoint, I don't know how much better it is than other dryers. Yeah, we did test it up against other dryers and it wasn't, um, the speed of it wasn't that much different. So for $200 more than most dryers, I don't really know if it's, worth it. Joanne says, I wish that was my head. No. Okay. 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 All right, so we're almost there. What's my favorite dryer? I don't know. I mean, I like them. I have a lot of favorite things, but I don't know if I have like a favorite dryer. I, uh, I would use any dryer, really. Any professional dryer. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I go back and forth with using this one. Like yesterday, I did use the Paul Mitchell one. Uh, I was going to use the Paul Mitchell one today, but I didn't have the nozzle with me. Um, so it just depends. Another little tip with blow drying is when you think it's dry, go a little bit longer. Because you go from being like damp to dry and damp to kind of frizzy and then to smooth. And that's where you want to sit. You want to sit on the smooth category. And you don't want to do as much work with a flat iron, right? Because um, damage is going to come from using a flat iron too much. Would this 
Would this blow dry brush and drying technique be good for someone with a strong wave pattern? Uh, yeah, depending on what you want to do. Like if you want to smooth out your hair, this is a really good um, technique for that. Flat wrapping creates tension, smooths the hair around the head. Um, so yeah, anybody with wavy hair, if you want your hair straight. If you have wavy hair and you want to wear it wavy, then this is probably not the technique for you. I would do a more of a round brush or diffuser to dry your hair. I want to make that a t-shirt. I love the Kurt. <laughs> yeah. The Cardi B Kurt t-shirt. In clients with longer hair when finishing, if you want to create waves, would you prefer to use a round brush or a blow dryer or an iron? I actually, so if I had a client with longer hair, I'd use a round brush and then finish it with an iron, probably a wand iron. That's usually my, my go-to. I didn't grow up using a curling iron much, so a wand is a little bit easier for me. A lot of the haircuts I do, I, I blow dry them straight, um, unless it's a curly cut. So I'm, I'm really two different ways with haircutting. I'm either curly or really straight. So, but with my longer hair clients, I will bring out the wand and, and finish it that way. But even with longer hair, I like to finish it with dry cutting. So a lot of times I will smooth it. Um, cut into it and then uh when i'm done cutting into it then i will uh iron it over okay got a real deep part on this thing all right so now we're just going to iron it real quick oh thanks sweet So I'll tilt the head over. How often do you do these live streams? As a cosmetology apprentice, this has been so great and educational. Every day. So Morgan, I, so we've started doing this, committing to it, trying to do Tuesday through Friday um, at 11 a.m. Eastern time, which is our time. Uh, now things come up. So, like, next week we have a big video shoot here for three days straight starting Tuesday through Thursday. So I don't know if I'll be able to do this next week, um, but I'm going to do it as often as I can because uh, I like hanging with you guys every day. And this has been a, a good way for us to communicate. So do I have a favorite brand of flat iron? Yes, Paul Mitchell. This Paul Mitchell Neuro Iron is definitely my favorite. It heats up super fast within seconds. Like and not like one minute seconds, like ten seconds. Um and they last quite a while too. So really love love that iron. I've been using it since the original green iron back in the day. What else we got? Learned a lot from you. Love watching your videos. Rosario. It's a cool name. I'm glad you guys like the live stream. It's um it's fun to do. It's looking nice. And I feel like I'm like Making videos is fun, but um, this, I feel like I'm back to teaching. This, I feel like I'm back to teaching again, like really teaching and addressing things as they come up instead of trying to premeditate everything and make videos on that. Even though we take all of these and we turn them into videos. Um, so for the people that don't like watching hours of me and Carly talking. <laughs> That's still available. 
So like this cut will be put together and put on YouTube probably next week for you guys to watch again if you want to. Can you curl with a straight iron? Of course, Judy. You can curl with the straight iron. I don't feel like, I, I want to say, and this, somebody probably will be like, nah, um, but I do want to say that it's not as modern of a curl anymore. Um, if I was going to curl with this, and I'll actually, I'm going to show you guys a little tip when I'm done. That's the beauty of being live. I, I'm going to do it with a different mannequin because this is a short haircut, and if we curl, it's going to look silly. Um, hi from Brazil. I want to go to Brazil. Got to go. Christina's roots, you know, Carly's. It's the roots. Fevin. Fevin? Thank you. Reached 10,000 people yesterday on this show. So what I would love for you guys to do, what would mean the most to me is that if you could share this, especially if you're on Facebook, um, whenever I'm on, if you could share it with your friends and tell them to come watch with your salon or whoever, that would be awesome. And uh, even if you take this show and share it later, share it on Facebook or snap it on Instagram, tag me in it, that would be the best payment you could ever give me. So we could reach more than 10,000 per show. Well, Carly set this down at a nice 360, and I turned it up to 390 is where I'm trying. I'm trying hard to keep it out of 400 because I get it. It's damaging. You should not crank your iron up too high. But at the same time, I like the result, 400. That's nice. So my recap of the foam that I used, um, yes, it was a violet foam for toning blonde hair. Look at that. Um, violet foam for toning blonde hair. If it has kind of a a textury feel to the hair. So my recommendation with this product, and what I like to do is just kind of give you guys my honest opinion on it. Um, I think it'd be great for blonde hair. It feels very conditioning. I think that's probably why it has that kind of feeling to it. I would be lighter with the product. I put a lot into this bob. I kind of loaded my hand up, soaked it in. I probably would have went a little lighter next time. Um, for my clients that do have blonde hair, I think that it's probably really beneficial. And if I read this, uh, infuses hair with hydrating, whatever name that is, oils, while instantly banish oils, while instantly banishing brass for a brilliantly blonde finish. So taking out the brassy tones, conditioning the hair with oils, that oils is what I'm feeling in the hair. I like to gather my own opinions on products before I they tell me what it's going to be, you know? Um, and I'm lazy at reading products. <laughs> I'm definitely known to uh, accidentally put shampoo in the hair because I didn't read the description and try to style with it. That's happened. One time I put a YouTube video up, and I used the product. It was a foaming shampoo, but I didn't read the bottle. Yeah, and... Uh, and I was like, this doesn't feel right. And then I put it out on YouTube and somebody goes, I use that for shampooing. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Digging it. What are you guys thinking so far? Hey, man, I need your help, Sarah. Um, all right. So now when I move into... Um, just cleaning this up. Like we're not going to take too much out of it. 
you could see the line looks pretty good, but I just want to go through and fine tune it. So what I will do is I'll tilt the head down slightly, comb it with an even wider tooth comb. So this is a YS Park 332 comb. Um, this one has super wide teeth. Again, free salon education uh, if you want to buy a, a new comb. Um, it's got wide teeth, so I'm not pulling any tension really at all. It's just really controlling the hair at this point. So I comb that down. Um, and then I take a look. You don't want to tilt too far on this either. The um, better thing to do is to lift the head up. Let's see if I can get zoomed in. That's good. So then I get it eye level. Now, again, I would in the salon um, use a stool, cutting stool. I would sit and then I would be eye level. With a mannequin, I can obviously lift it up here and, uh, and work with it this way. Now I'm going to go through with just the tip of the scissor and create whatever the line is that I desire, right? So you can get fancy with your line or you can just go through and clean up what you created in the wet cut. And that's what I'm going to do. So now I'll just go through cut underneath who's this Dory Dory from uh, Finding Nemo it's her first time here his hers from Alberta Canada cool welcome be sharp in between getting to physical classes sweet that is the hope. All right, so just fine tuning the line. I'll go flat with the blade after I do a little bit with the tip. So the tip, I'll take off the length, like the actual like parts that are sticking out a little bit further. And then when I get the length where I want it, then just to clean and create a really nice sharp line, then I go through with the blade a little flatter. Another cool trick, uh, I learned this from my pal Josh DeMarco, is to take a little hairspray and comb that into the hair. Uh, this is a nice firm hold hairspray. This is Joyco uh, Joy Mist Firm. Um, like this for a lot of things, mostly. They used to say like for different hairsprays, it would stop a bird in flight. This is like definitely that hairspray. Uh, so super strong hold but I just put that in the hair get the hair exactly kind of where I want it and then go through and cut your line and it actually keeps the hair a little um thanks Carly keeps the hair in place And I'll show you guys that. So you see how hard that line is. And just so you guys know, a little trick of the trade is that all these people that post all these really sharp haircuts with these sharp lines. It takes a lot of time to detail those lines. It's not like, oh, I just did it all in the dry cut or the wet cut because I'm so amazing at this. It's not how it works. You really got to fine tune it to get it exactly where you want. Heat not being able to stand in front of it. That's okay though. And those of you guys that do watch these and they you're trying to get an appointment, I'm doing these live classes every day, so it's hard to um hard to take clients 
getting there. Hard to take clients, uh, new clients, so I don't take new clients. Um, I've dedicated my life now to doing live streams. Oh, yeah, she didn't say anything, right, Sarah? <laughs> All right, cool. I think it's good. I mean, I don't... You guys get the gist. I could do this for hours. But that is... I'll lower this a little bit. I would do that a little different with a real person. Probably wouldn't spray it in their eyeballs. I'd block it. All right, let me zoom in a little bit, give you guys a full run around, and then we'll go back over. So take a look. Our line. I definitely could make that line a little more, a little straighter, but I don't want to bore you guys, so I'll do that. But that's the whole technique. So it's so weird. I feel like the chat like died off. It left. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching this part of the uh, video. If you guys have any questions, make sure you post them in the comments below. I'd love to uh, to hear your questions, your comments, what you think about this video, um, anything you want to learn upcoming. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, but here is the cut. So I hope you like it. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back over to the podcast table. We're going to finish things up. I want to talk to you guys a little bit more, and then we'll, we're going to continue on with our day. Thank you guys so much. One second while we move over. All right. I forgot to end the uh I forgot to end <laughs> the Instagram. I wasn't I was I didn't say anything cuz I just figured <laughs> you knew. But <laughs> Instagram's like watching the wall the whole time. <laughs> Whoops. All right. So Yeah, weirdly uh, I think the um the chat went away. Let's they all got busy. Yeah. But I do see I can see uh YouTube now. So I'm not sure what happened with with everything else, but it looks like it's still all rolling. So we got that going for us. All right, cool. So uh, thank you guys so much for being a part of today. Uh, hope you guys liked it. Hope you enjoyed everything that we did. Um, what did you think, Carly? It was awesome. I love watching like you refining that line. It's like so um, relaxing. <laughs> yeah, <And laughs> it's actually one of my favorite things because you're just like you know refining and like it just. For me, like cutting a mannequin is is a relaxing thing, and I think people need to do it. You've been doing it a lot actually yeah. <laughs> lately, which is good because I'll come, I'll show up like the next day, and Carly's been in here like cutting mannequins, yeah. which is really fun uh, to watch. You guys should definitely, um, if you get a chance, get a mannequin. Um, and we've talked about it before, but just don't cut the whole thing right away. Do different different cuts, sectioning. Maybe do sectioning first, combing it all of that stuff and then go into it and um, and do your your bigger cuts later, mm -hmm. like after you've done it for a while. Budget it out. Like think I want to spend, instead of spending, you know, maybe the $10 a month on Netflix or whatever it is, maybe you budget out, well, if I would have spent that, maybe $10 a month. So I have a mannequin for six months. Yeah. 
you know, and then I, you mark out over the six month period, what you want to do with that mannequin so that you keep it. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I think it's Fevin. I don't know if I'm saying that right. You can let me know, but uh, it says, do you have any tips for new cosmetologists? Carly, do you have anything? You're, you're newer. Um, hmm, let's see. (laughs) Don't be afraid. Don't be like intimidated. Um, ask a ton of questions. If you're like, unsure about something um whoever you're working with or around should you know want to help you and um I'm very fortunate because everyone here has been super helpful and like if I have ever have any questions about anything I know I can go to them so make sure that um you know wherever you work or decide to work that you are surrounding yourself with those kinds of people um yeah, and That's don't, a good call. don't be afraid to, like, try something. Just because just, the only way you're going to learn is if you do it. Um, yeah. And that's where, so just so, to kind of give people an idea of your process now, we, uh, like today, you were bringing in a model. Yeah. Uh, we opened up your book. You're going to do blow dries. Mm-hmm. So um, that's kind of where we're starting everything. You're cutting mannequin heads. Uh, we're doing these classes. I think... Um, for new cosmetologists, you just need to be learning always. Yeah. So, uh, and push yourself. Don't, don't wait for other people to push you. Yeah. I think that's probably like number one is, um, you gotta, you gotta want it. I think everything I've been able to do in my, uh, hair career is because, and I actually made a post on Instagram about it today. I, the very first opportunity that I got was because I, I, volunteered my time. I drove, oh, I got a ride cause I didn't have a car that would get me three hours away from my house. A guy drove me to a hair show and I volunteered for the whole weekend. Um, and I met the guy that I moved out here to work for at that show. So like, I think, um, you gotta, you gotta put yourself out there if you want opportunities to happen. And, um, you know, good things come, um, to, to people that work hard yeah. and, uh, and keep pushing forward. Um, a lot of people say like, I like Rob Deerdick's thing with make your own luck. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really, that is kind of life. Like you, you have to work hard. Um, and when you work hard, luck happens, but it's yeah. not like you're just a lucky, like you're not, not everybody's winning the lottery because right. they're just lucky people. Mm-hmm. Like you have to, you put in the work and then people will recognize it and you'll get opportunities based on that. Yeah. Um, MS Glitter saying fake it till you make it. I actually don't agree. I, I say work hard till you make it. Um, because people like you should, and and I get that you're saying that and like a lot of people say it, but for me, I just don't, I don't understand the saying because when you fake something, um, it's not, that to me is not really, I I know a lot of people that fake being good at things or Mm -hmm. fake, you know, uh, fake working. They only work hard in front of the right people. Um, and I'm not saying that she, that person, uh, is, th- is that kind of person, but that's what I, that's where I get from that saying yeah. is, um, you know, when you fake it till you make it, you're, you're just kind of working your way around till you make it. And I think working hard is always going to get you more of a long term feeling. It's the same thing. And it ties back to the beginning of this podcast when I was talking about large community or, or large following versus mm-hmm. tight community, mm-hmm. right? Uh, large following is easy. You can fake that. You can create that. You can buy that. You can do all these things to get this large following, but true community takes a lot of dedication, hard work, and, um, you can't fake it. So um, I also feel like you're not learning if you're faking it. Cause like if you're faking it, then clearly maybe you don't know yeah. something and like, then you're not learning because you're just saying, oh, you're well, pretending, pretend to, right. Yeah. So I yeah. think, you know, admitting that you don't know something or you're unsure about something or asking those questions is just a good way to learn and better yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And MS Glitter is going to clarify, totally clarifying. Yes. I love you have 420 <laughs> in your name as well. Uh, I'm saying to cut the nerves for the beginning, which I totally, yeah. I totally understand. I just, I just have a personal thing with the phrase fake it till you make it, it's fake it till you make it. But that doesn't mean that. I don't think you're faking anything and I, I get where it comes from, but I think people take it the wrong way. Yeah. Um, there was a, a saying, uh, Robert Cromines, uh, when I 
was first started doing hair, I would hear him say like, if you want to be successful, hang around successful people. And I didn't really understand that whole thing. I just thought it meant like, just hang around successful people. Um, but as you like, as you grow, you start to realize, well, what he's really saying is that kind of like that to me, what I think he's saying now is the hard work and being around successful people gets you opportunities, which is kind of what we're saying today. Like, you wouldn't have those opportunities if you weren't, if you're not around successful people or people that are doing what you want to do, then it's harder to get there. Um, but again, hard work. That's, that's what it's all about. Uh, do you think as an experienced stylist, you should still bring in a model to try a new technique or should you tell your client beforehand if it's a new technique, if you're unsure how it will really turn out hmm. or do you just go ahead and try it? And if it doesn't go well, <laughs> have a backup plan. So this is Taylor. Great question. Um, I think you should always, um, I think you should always be doing models. It's, it's definitely the way that you push yourself. It's the way that you learn new things. Um, models allow a freedom that I think gets you more, uh, word of mouth talking that goes about in your town. Um, Nothing bad comes from doing a model. The only reason I would say not to maybe do models is if you are so busy that you are never sitting in the break room, then maybe there's other ways to go about things. Mm -hmm. And maybe, um, but that's 90% of the time, not the scenario. So I think you should definitely yeah. find models that fit a technique that you want to do because then that will make, create you content that you can put on the internet, mm -hmm. right? And not like in a famous way, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is creating um, hair that you can post so that people locally can see how good you are. Yeah. Um, you don't get those things in a day-to-day -day salon life. Like it's busy. There's a lot going on. I think you could still collect content mm -hmm. like blow dry tips or things that you're already doing. You're already talking to your client about blow dries. You're already giving them tips. You're already talking about products. All that stuff's already happening. Getting a good picture of hair that you've done is harder to do because you're in that small window of in between clients mm -hmm. when you're really busy. If you're not really busy and you're not taking pictures, then you are not in the right business. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. So I think that's all right. You guys are all awesome. Um, thank you for all the nice things you guys said today. Had a great day with you. That's what this podcast is all about. <laughs> Having a great day. Yeah. Um, did I tell you that at my class in San Jose, somebody was singing the song? No. Not even kidding. Way. He was sitting in the front row and <laughs> I brought up the podcast and he started singing yes. the song. Yeah. Yeah. So at first I was like, maybe, maybe I should make the song go away. And then I was like, nah. I got Welcome to the map. He's singing. Podcast. So up this way. All right, Carly. We'll see you later. See you later. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pixie cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews. Let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, lift it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, lift it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, lift it, spray it, flip it.